The following theorem shows us that we can always find a decomposition vector with respect to a subspace and its orthogonal complement. So we have the orthogonal decomposition theorem. So here, we want to let w be a subspace of Rn, and we want to let vector v be a vector in Rn. Then there exists unique vectors w in subspace w, and the orthogonal vector w in the orthogonal complement of subspace w, such that we can decompose vector v as being vector v is equal to the sum of vector w plus the orthogonal vector w. Now, this should look familiar. We just verified this same idea only in the R2 case, using that geometric interpretation of orthogonal projections. So this is simply a natural extension of the two-dimensional case into higher dimensions. So let's continue our exploration of orthogonal decomposition with the following example. Find the orthogonal decomposition of vector v with respect to subspace w. And we are given a cute vector v. And let's make a little love note here to ourselves. Since we have a subspace w spanned by a single vector, for convenience, I'm going to say that this is the span of the vector u sub 1. And we know that u sub 1 in this case is the vector with components 1, 1, 1. So since subspace w is spanned by this single vector, then we know that the projection, the orthogonal projection of vector v onto subspace w is equal to the projection of vector v onto this single vector u sub 1, which by definition is defined as vector u sub 1 dotted with vector v, all divided by the dot product of vector u sub 1 with itself, and that's multiplied by this vector u sub 1. So plugging in what we have, we have the dot product of vector u sub 1, that's vector 1, 1, 1, and we are dotting this with vector v, 2, 4, negative 1. And this is all divided by the dot product of vector u sub 1 with itself. Now remember, this is just the scalar multiple. This is all still multiplied by that vector u sub 1. So computing these dot products, in the numerator, we have 2 plus 4 minus 1, all divided by 1 plus 1 plus 1, multiplied by vector u sub 1. So this is leaving us with the scalar multiple 5 thirds times vector u sub 1, so the vector with components 1, 1, 1, and so we can conclude that the orthogonal projection of vector v onto subspace w is the vector with components 5 thirds, 5 thirds, 5 thirds. So we're now going to take this orthogonal projection of vector v onto subspace w and use this to find the component of vector v orthogonal to subspace w. So in other words, we are looking for the perp of vector v onto subspace w, which we can equivalently write as the perp of vector v onto vector u sub 1. And by definition, we know that this is equivalent to vector v minus the orthogonal projection of vector v onto vector u sub 1. So Plugging in what we have, we know that vector v is the vector with components 2, 4, negative 1. And we are subtracting the orthogonal projection vector that we just found. The vector with components 5 thirds, 5 thirds, 5 thirds. So getting a common denominator and combining up those like terms, we have 6 thirds minus 5 thirds, which is going to leave us with 1 third. We have 12 thirds minus 5 thirds, which leaves us with 7 thirds. And last but not least, we have minus 3 thirds minus 5 thirds, which leaves us with negative 8 thirds. 
And so we can say that, therefore, the component of vector v orthogonal to subspace w is equal to the vector with components 1 third, 7 thirds, negative 8 thirds. And now with this final answer here, we can see how we can decompose vector v into the sum of the orthogonal projection of vector v onto subspace w plus the component of vector v orthogonal to subspace w. And plugging in what we found above, we can see that, yes, this is in fact equal to vector v. We have 6 thirds, 12 thirds, minus 3 thirds, which simplifies to 2, 4, negative 1, confirming our decomposition of vector v.